Hello and welcome to this part two of UV unwrapping with Instamat Studio using the Element Graph. If you haven't already, go ahead and check out the previous part, which is linked in the description below, where we quickly unwrap the UVs of this communicator model. In this video, what we're going to do is take that workflow to the next level, where I show you how to unwrap multiple parts of the model into multiple material sections, distributing these pieces across multiple UV tiles. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've gone ahead and I've dragged and dropped my FBX file into my Instamet package. And now what I'm going to do is create a new project and I'm going to create a new element graph and I'm going to create one without a template. So let's go ahead and drag the FBX into the element graph and spawn it as an element mesh. And you can now see that I have my uh, communicator model here in the viewport just by clicking on that little end pin there or pressing V on the keyboard. So let's inspect this model for a minute. Uh, right now, if I go and type in, you know, mesh UV, again, just like before in the previous video to preview the UV layout, you can see, you know, we don't have any really good working UVs on this model. We're back to square one. And what I like to do is I'd like to separate different parts of this model out into different material sections and assign some material sections to this model as well. Now, how do we view the material sections on this model? Well, what we can do is use a node called Mesh Mask. And Mesh Mask is great. It allows you to quickly mask off parts of the model based on either the sub mesh name or the material name. And you can see that I can view the material sections on this model just by changing this and viewing this in the graph object editor. So you can see we have a whole bunch of, you know, plastic pieces. I've just named it plastic for a bunch of those parts. I've got the body here. You can see them highlighting here in the viewport, the body. And then I also have the screen. And those are the three separate material sections that I'd actually like to create for the plastic pieces, for the main body, and for the screen. So let's go ahead and create some material sections now, and we're going to use the mesh mask just to verify that things are working the way we should. So how do I create these sections? Well, first what I want to do is I want to split out all these different parts and pieces into separate, you can think of them as scenes as it were. So I'm going to go and drag a connection and I'm going to type in extract. And this is going to uh, let me find with quick search the mesh extract by sub mesh name. And we have a bunch of different extract, you know, options here. You can extract by UDIM tile, which is pretty cool, or by the material section. In this case, let's use by sub mesh name. And so this is really cool. It gives us this sub mesh filter where we can determine, you know, which objects we would like to extract out as their own mesh here in the graph. So what I'm going to type in here in sub mesh filter is star plastic star. So I've got uh, plastic in between two asterisks here. And what that does, is if I view the output is, you can see now we've just extracted all of the plastic pieces here. Any, you know, sub mesh that had the word plastic in its name is now extracted. And this is pretty cool because if I type in mesh mask again, you can see we had a bunch of plastic pieces, but it had, you know, uh, underscore 14, 15, 16, etc. It was smart enough to be able to filter out just the sub meshes that had the word plastic in it. And that's what we have here. So that's great. And I want to do the same thing for the body and for the screen sub meshes as well. So I'm going to hold alter option, left click and drag to duplicate this node. And I'm just going to change this from plastic to screen. And there we go. You can see we've now extracted out the screen here. And let's do it one more time for the body. And there we go, we've got the body. So we've got each of these parts here. I'm just pressing V to quickly preview them in the viewport. And now there are their own separate little scenes, separate meshes here that we've extracted out. So now there's two more steps that I want to do. One is I want to assign a material section to each of these different extractions. And the second step is unwrap the UVs for each of those different material sections so that all these parts take up all of the zero to one space for each of those uh, UV tiles for each section. So starting off with plastic, let's go ahead and bring in a node called clear materials. Now, the reason why, before I show you that, if I go ahead and take a look again using that mesh mask on the original, you know, input mesh here, if I go to uh, material, you can see we already have a default material section here. So if I use the clear 
mesh clear materials node. Uh, what this is going to do is it's going to replace the default material with something that you know we specify. So actually, let's go ahead and just pipe this in after the uh, the plastic section here. So it's going to replace and you know get rid of all the materials in this you know uh, extraction that we have the default material, and it's going to create a new default material name which I'm going to call plastic. So let's do the same thing. Let's remove the materials from the screen extraction and call it screen with its own default material. And then let's do the same thing here for the body. Great. So now if I go ahead and, you know, use the mesh mask again to take a look at the materials of the you know the plastic you can see we just have a plastic material or we just have a screen material which is exactly what we need so the last step like i said is now to unwrap the uvs for each of these different sections so starting off again let's use uh, our mesh uv unwrap node and very quickly you can see it's going to uh, unwrap the uvs of this part and what I want to do is I want to change the strategy to hard surface axial again because it's a great strategy for this type of mesh information. So if I go ahead and type in mesh UV just like we did in the previous video, you can now see we have really nice UVs for all of these plastic pieces, right? This is great. So again, let's just do the same thing for the rest of our material sections. I'm just going to connect a duplicate one here for the screen. We can go ahead and preview the UVs here. It should be nice and big. Great. This should give us lots of, you know, texture resolution, textile density for screen information, which is why I wanted to branch this out into its own material section. Then we'll unwrap the UVs here for the body as well. So this is a nice, fast way to be able to, you know, unwrap the UVs, assign some material sections as well, which is great. So we've gone ahead and, you know, we've, we've uh, extracted things, assigned materials, unwrapped the UVs, but now we need to combine everything back together into one mesh. So to do that, we're going to use the Mesh Append node. And the mesh append node combines two of these meshes together into one. And there's an option here called merge materials. So it's going to merge all the materials from each of these different objects, uh, you know, together into the final scene, the final mesh, actually. So let's go ahead and take our plastic, I believe that was, yep, and also the screen. And if I view the output here, there we go. You can see that we have both the screen and the plastic together. And again, if I use that mesh mask, you can see that we have uh, two objects here and we also have the plastic and the screen materials. And if we look closely, you can see we've got, you know, the screen here. This is its own tile. And then if I disable that and enable the plastic, we have those uh, UVs as well. And then we're just going to use the mesh append node again. I can just drag a connection here, type in append with quick search. And we'll go ahead and connect the body here as well. So everything is now back together again. So just to verify that everything is working, again, I'm going to use that mesh mask to see if we have our materials. Great, that's looking good. And if I just toggle through, I can see, you know, I've got the screen UVs, which is great, the plastic ones, and body. Now, just like in the previous video, if I want to now export this mesh and I want to, you know, start texturing it with Instamat, I can absolutely do that by making sure that I view the final node here in the viewport. Again, clicking that last output. I can also right click and choose to view mesh output in the viewport as well. And I can go up here to the, uh, I can go over here to the save option and choose to export the viewport scene. Now, something I didn't show you in the previous video, which was uh, another way to export meshes, if I go ahead and drag a connection out here and choose to expose the output as a graph output, uh, this is going to create a mesh output for our graph. So I can go over to the 
export dialog here. That's this curved arrow here in the toolbar. And you'll notice that it's detected my mesh output here, and it's allowing me to choose a mesh file format extension. So I can change this from FBX to something like USD or GLB, whichever I need for my pipeline and my workflow. And then I can provide an output path here, and then I can set up some naming conventions like, you know, you know, do I want to name it based on, you know, the month, the, the year, or some output types, things like that. It's very uh, comprehensive how we can format the, the name of the files that we generate from Instamat. So all I have to do now is hit export, and it will go ahead and export my files. So that is a quick look at how to create this workflow. And what's pretty cool about it is, you know, if I have other meshes that have, you know, the same kind of naming conventions that use the word plastic or, or screen or body or, or more uh, in the files, I can just replace the input mesh and it's going to automatically assign materials, unwrap UVs and combine everything back together again, which is great. So it's a nice way to create a very quick scalable workflow inside of Instamat using the element graph. And now if I wanted to texture this asset, all I have to do once I've saved the file out here is I can create a new project and I can go to asset texturing. And, you know, I have two options here that I can take advantage of. The multi-material mode provides multiple layer stacks for each material section. So I'll have a layer stack just for the screen, just for the plastic and for the body uh, separately. But if I use multi-material unified, what that does is it allows me to texture the whole asset with one layer stack, even though I have multiple material sections. So it's very similar to something like a UDIM workflow where you have multiple tiles, uh, but we only have one layer stack. In this case, uh, we can take all of the, the material sections that we just made and treat it like a UDIM project. And all I have to do is just texture the asset using a single layer stack, and it's automatically going to distribute all the texturing across all those material sections and tiles for me. And if you're interested in taking a, a further look at that workflow, I'm going to go ahead and add a link in the description to a video that I did uh, showing off how we can do this type of UV unwrapping workflow in Instalod. But we also take a sneak peek at what texturing that asset uh, looks like inside of Instamat as well. All right, well, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, drop us a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe. For the latest news about Instamat, please visit our website, follow us on X, join us on Discord, or sign up for the Abstract community. You can find all the links in the video description below. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next one.